Hey guys, welcome back to part 5 of my 3D modeling tutorial for 3D Studio Max. Today we're going to continue the M4A1 by uh, building the front sight here. And uh, we're just going to start right off here. And instead of creating another basic um, cylinder or whatever, I'm just going to clone the barrel that we have. Since it's already lined up on the same axis that we want ours to be, I'm just going to call this front sight. And I'm going to make sure that this is a copy. It's very important that you don't make that an instance because we want our original barrel to remain unchanged. And I'm just going to move this into place. And I'm just going to move a little bit quicker today um, just to kind of get this front sight out of the way here. Most of the stuff that we're doing right now is just repeating what I've already been covering in my other videos. Oops. Just want to select that here, connect give it two segments, work with the pinch there, and there we go, delete the center, and I believe from the barrel object we actually still have the end cap, and we do, I want to get rid of that, extrude the uh, faces that we have here, and unhide all just to make sure that I've got a good scale going on there, uh, maybe 1.25 should be good for me. Um, if you have to work with a uh, different scale in your program or in your save file, then you know just kind of try to get it to look like these two metal rings. Um, <clears throat> next, we got to do is uh, add some more loops, and I just want one edge loop on each one of those segments. Now, I'm going to convert my selection to vertex, and you'll see that the pivot point changed. It kind of became um, shift or it shifted to the perfect center between my two selections and that's why I selected the scale tool to kind of just shift these edges uniformly and uh, it's just a good good way to keep things even. I'm gonna go back to face mode and deselect some of these faces that I don't need now. Here we go. Yeah, I want the, the top seven faces of my 18-sided uh, cylinder here selected. I'm just going to extrude those. I'm going to come up here. And another thing I want to do, um, I'll show you the Make Planar tool really quick, which is very handy. Instead of scaling this to become flat like I normally would do, um, we have a perfectly symmetrical selection here, and I want them to be flat on the y-axis, or yeah, I want them to be flat on the y-axis. So I'll just press the Y key right here next to Make Planar. Um, if I just click Make Planar, it would approximate um, in the, from the pivot point or wherever the uh, gizmo is located, and that normally approximates the, uh, the center between and uh, also the rotational axis in between the selection that you currently have, and uh, it would make it flat based on the rotation and location of that gizmo. And uh, I mean, since it was a symmetrical selection on the uh, the axis here, it, Make Planar would have gotten us the same result, but just because I wanted to be flat on the Y value or Y axis, I had to select the Y. Um, so next thing I'm going to do is scale these inward a little bit on the Y axis. All right, and just kind of approximate how thin that should be, and I think that's good. Next thing I'm going to do is throw in an edge loop here, and I'm going to make that flat again on the y-axis. And make sure that you have the uh, edge constraints turned on before you do that, actually. I just undid that really quick. And um, now turning the edge constraint off. I just wanted to make sure that this um, edge down here is sitting flat where the uh, corner or kink is for this shape. So with the edge constraints off now, we can move this into place. We'll create some more edge loops. Edge constraints on again. Make planar. And there you go. We're going to bring that up towards the bottom of that shape there. All right. Next, I'm going to select the faces over here. And I'm going to bridge those. Oh, and it looked like we got some kind of a funky little error going on here. It's shifting our lines. For some reason, it's atta attaching the wrong vertex points to the wrong ones. So I'm just going to undo that really quick. 
I'll delete those and I'll select the outline selections and I'll just uh, go back to edge mode now actually so deselect the uh, bottom portion of it so that we only have the top segments here I'm gonna bridge that together select the outline again and now I'll just have the bottom lines selected and I'll bridge that now outlines again and now we have the two sides here and we'll just cap them off another thing I'm going to do now is give this thing um, a symmetry modifier so we gotta cut it perfectly in half again but you gotta notice that these edge loops aren't connected on all sides um, especially since we have this big hole here in the center on both sides so what we need to do is make sure that the edges are on both the inside and outside and the bottoms of these rings here and then we're gonna connect with one single line and then in the top view we'll just delete the uh, the top half alright and then we're gonna throw a symmetry modifier onto it this way we just cut down the workload a little bit so that we're only editing one side instead of working on both and just repeating the same thing over and over again so now what I want to do is I want to copy the Y value on this here and I'm going to go into x-ray mode oh, actually before I do that I want to um, throw some more edge loops in here actually um, make that planar oops there we go on the Y value I want to make that planar and kind of approximate where the top portion of this um, connecting piece in the center here would be um, then we're gonna throw one more edge loop in okay actually we're gonna do without that edge loop for just a moment and now we're going to uh, use the Y value that we copied just paste that in there for these points here there we go next thing I'm going to do is delete the faces up here at the top I'm going to copy the Z value on this line here that we created and I'm going to shift oops, edge face or edge constraint off shift and drag that upward and on the Y value make that planar again convert to vertex so that we can get a value down here and then we're going to paste the, the Z value into that and now we can delete these points here I'll just bridge those parts together and I'm gonna just cap the outlines there we go next I'm going to kinda give an edge loop to this but I want to deselect these parts here Actually, I'm going to have to do that again because we're doing this on both sides. Connect. And then we're going to bring this down. Give it another... Um, actually, ed edge constraint might work there. There we go. I just want to make sure that this uh, Z value here is the same. Zoom in on that whole viewport. Oops a little too close there we go alright so now that those are in place I'm going to connect these points Oop, way too many points selected there we go and now I'm just gonna take these faces here on the inside and bridge them together there we go now 
Hmm. I think I'm going to drag this inward a little. Oops. Take the edge constraints off again. And it looks like we can actually get rid of that edge loop there. I'm just going to target weld that just to clean up the geometry a little bit. I'm going to loop those and just control backspace. We still have a triangle in here, but we'll clean that up later, no worries. Um, let's see. Now I have to add some edges in here. Actually, i got to get two edge loops. Kind of drag those apart a little bit. There we go. And now just selecting these bottom edges, we can bring that up. Perfect. Alright, we might do some adjusting to the width of that on the inside there, but I think it looks alright so far. I think we've got a pretty decent block out going here. Next thing I'm going to do is create the curve at the top here, um, just to kind of improve the silhouette of our shape a little more. So I'm going to create a cylinder. Um, I guess 18 sides is going to do. Um, bring that into a negative height value here. One thing I want to do from this um, original um, front sight here is copy this Y value here from this edge on the outside of our top flat surface here. I'm just going to copy that and since our cylinder is in the negative height value here, our pivot point is on um, I guess the uh, outside which the uh, flat edge should line up to and that's what we're going to copy our y, y value to and now it's kind of flush with that top flat edge there. Next thing I'm going to do is just align that cylinder to the top end of our um, of our front sight shape by um, putting the current object or selected object to pivot point and then maximum to target object. Oops, I think we did that on the wrong axis. Oh, no, we just did it in the wrong viewport. That's why the axis changed. All right. So now that we have that, I'm going to adjust the height just a little bit because it's not that big of a piece. There we go. All right. And then I'm going to convert this to an editable poly. Maybe before I delete that, I'm going to connect these faces here first to kind of um, clean up the geometry on our cylinder just a little bit so we have all four-sided faces. And uh, that's going to be good. Oops. Go back to front view there. Select that really quick. There we go. Alright, so now I'm going to attach. Oh, actually before we do that, there's one more thing we have to do to adjust our uh, cylinder here. First I'm going to go to the utilities panel and throw a reset X form shape on there. And I'm going to reset selected. And since we've done changes to the cylinder, I feel it's important to reset X forms before we throw a bend modifier onto it. And uh, the bend modifier is just going to help us get this little outward curve that you'll see on the front sight for these M4s. And, uh, let's see. I think we're going to have to adjust that to 90 degrees. Yep, there we go. And maybe 35 degrees. There we go. That's a good looking, good looking curve. All right. So now we can just attach our bent cylinder here. And then we're just going to take these verts at the bottom and just bring them into place. And uh, I'll copy the uh, Y value, oops, the Y value of this 
curve that we created. I'm just going to kind of finesse that curve just a little bit more. There we go. And that's kind of the result I'm looking for. Maybe I'll just adjust that a little bit more to taper a little more evenly. There we go. Maybe we'll shift this in just a little. There we go. That's more the result I was looking for. It looks like maybe this little sharp corner here on the reference image was a little off. And I kind of like the way it looks right now. There we go. If you look at the front of our rifle, we're already getting a pretty cool looking feel for the M4. Um, alright, so I guess the next step would be to create that little box in here. And we're just going to do that by adding a, oops, a ring here really quick. And don't worry about all these um, N-Gons and non-connected um, portions of the, uh, the front sight. We're going to get to that. Um, in just a little bit. Um, right now I'm just worried about getting the basic shapes down and um, until we have them we can really just leave most of these places open. Um, so get this here. Oh, maybe that's a little too far in. I'll just copy this value. There we go. Give this a new edge. There we go. And then we're going to extrude. Get rid of these center points or center faces that we don't need. And then I'll just copy that X value here. In the X value we paste. All right. And just to make sure that these things welded together properly, I'll just check them out. There we go. And now all I want to do is just, oops, keep selecting all these different things I don't need. Go back to edge mode, and I'm going to chamfer this edge. And I'm just exaggerating that a little bit more than my reference is, just, just because I want it to be visible that I'm actually adding these little details in. And if I didn't do that then you really wouldn't notice a thing in the final product and I mean what the hell did I did it for and do it for then if uh, you're not going to be able to see it so I think right now we have a pretty good block out for our um, front sight the only thing we really still need is the notch up here and then the two loops for the um, the sling and also or at least for the sling loop and um, also the uh, little notch that you have up here for the bayonet to fi be fixed to. So um, I think we're running kind of short on time. I want to keep these videos a little more short. Um, so I think I'm just going to save this for the time being. And uh, I'll see you guys back for the next tutorial.